please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who have passed away in our community during the past week. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler. Here. Mr. Rogan. Mr. Loscombe. Here. Mr. Gaughan. Here. Mr. McGough. Here. Let the uh, minutes reflect that uh, Mr. Rogan will not be in attendance this evening. Uh, his he had prior commitments and uh, should be back next week. Uh, I make a motion to appoint Councilman Gauhan temporary chair for the Committee on Community Development. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority's regular board meeting held on May 15, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Tax Assessor's Results Report for hearing held on June 4, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Tax Assessor's Report for hearings to be held on July 9, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting held on June 25, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, Minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held on May 28, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, Audit Status Report from Robert Rossi and Company received June, June 19, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Are there any clerk's notes? Nothing, Mr. McGough. Thank you. Uh, any uh, council persons have uh, yes, announcements? Yes, Mr. McGough, I have one. Um, besides the fireworks uh, event that's going to take place uh, next Thursday, there also will be a concert and fireworks at Nayog Park on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, there also will be the Jimmy Stir Orchestra. will also be there, too, so you can start the 4th of July celebration a little early this year. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, a couple of reminders. Uh, first of all, uh, next Wednesday, uh, next week, the meeting, council meeting, will be held on Wednesday evening. Um, that's July second. Uh, City Hall will be closed on July Friday, July fourth. Also, uh, next Wednesday, uh, Mr. Amoroso will be. Uh, making a presentation to council at 5 p.m. Um, it will be advertised as a uh, as a caucus. Um, Mr. Amoroso will be here at 5, and then we will have the meeting. Yes, it will be held uh, in uh, council chambers, and the meeting will follow. Also, on tonight's agenda, the, or for tonight's agenda. There are two pieces of legislation that will be taken from the table. They, are the, um, they were tabled to allow for public com or for comment period uh, as required by HUD. They are the two pieces of legislation from OECD. They will be brought back in seventh order as seven um, C and D. Mm -hmm. And also, since they are not on the agenda and people did not have uh, did not know that prior. Uh, we will allow for additional um, comment period prior to those being voted upon. And that's all. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Joan Hodewanitz. Good evening, Council. Joan Hodawana, city resident. Uh, with regard to um, 3F, the audit status report from Robert Rossi dated June 19th, um, there's progress 
instead of having 26 outstanding items, we're down to 25. Okay. That's progress on one, in one sense, but on the other hand, it doesn't seem likely that that uh, audit is going to be available to the city before November 15th when they have to present their operating budget for next year to the council. So that, that's an item for concern, especially considering not just the financial situation of the city, uh, but the fact that we seem to have issues accounting issues. We've already had one that, that came up a few weeks ago, supposedly evolving El Boscoff. Um, and I was, I came um, about 15 minutes to 6 this afternoon, and I was looking at the background papers, and there was quite a lengthy composite pension board meeting report, and that was dated May 28th. That's item 3E. Have any of you had a chance to even glance at that? Yes. Okay. Did you read the narrative, Mr. McGough? I'm you sorry? Have, did you have a chance to look at the narrative, the first few pages? I, I read, the, I read the, the minutes that were okay. given to us. Um, I, I start reading it, and I got to the second page, and a couple red flags went up. Okay. I asked um, the city personnel, is Kathy? Okay. I asked Kathy if I could get a copy made. Unfortunately, the copier was down. So I'm going to get a copy made over the course of the next few days, and I'll readdress this next week. But the first paragraph on page two was very interesting because there was an issue about where checks were being written. Was it against the general fund, not otherwise specified, or against the city's coffers? And, and you know, when you see something like that, you know, that should raise a red flag uh, to whoever is receiving this report. If I were receiving the report, I would go back to that pension board and I would say, say what? You know, it, I have no idea how much money is involved, what they're talking about. Wasn't a very clearly written paragraph. It's the first paragraph on page two. But there was this issue of, you know, oh, are, are the checks coming out of the, pen, the, the general fund? They should be written against the city's coffers, and it was just kind of never resolved, and they moved on to another issue and another speaker. Um, that's why I'm very concerned about this audit report, because the audit's never going to catch up to the accounting, you know, as long as we're playing this catch-up game year after year after year. So I will get a copy of that lengthy report made, and I will come back to you next week, and I will read you that short paragraph. And maybe if you have a chance to read it over in the interim, you know, we can then get an answer on what are they talking about and is there an issue? Because that could fly under the radar. And I think a lot of our accounting issues are flying under the radar because we have neither the time, you know, uh, you know, to pursue them. Okay, so, you know, that's a little thing buried in a report. That's a very lengthy report. But it, it raised a red flag with me, and I stopped reading at that point in time because I'm going to get that whole report copied, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at it with the magnifying glass because I think these are the kinds of things you should be doing. And that's all I have tonight. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Faye Franis. Faye Franis, Granton. Good evening. Good evening. What I'm saying is just my opinion, but I'm sure many people feel the same way. Uh, tonight, for example, in the caucus, Ron Kuljeski from the county was there. He had so much information to share with the people. I couldn't even begin to remember it all about demolition and taxes and if you have a house and you want to buy the lot next year, and put it on the tax rolls and keep it make your house more valuable. Like, I can't even begin to tell you all the important things that he said. But because this council, not Jack, Mr. McGough, Mr. Gaughan, Mr. Wexler, I don't know about Pat Rogan, they don't want the people out here to hear what's going on in that caucus room. I saw no reason at all why Mr. Kolejewski could not be out here saying everything he said in there for half an hour so the people in the city would know what he was talking about. Just hearing council having, just having council here, it means nothing. I thought it was very interesting, and I think everybody in the city should have heard him, but they don't have the opportunity because Mr. McGough, Mr. Wexler, and Mr. Gaughan want to keep it in the back room so people can't know what's going on. 
And you can't sit there and say otherwise because I've asked you many times and neither, none of you have spoken up for wanting it out here. You just run along at Mr. McGough, follow the, follow the master. And last week, Mr. Gahn, you mentioned about the parking authority default made the city's credibility bad. Oh, no, it didn't. That was the best thing this council did with Jack Loscombe, Janet Evans, and Pat Rowan. Thank you, Mr. Loscombe, last week for speaking up the way you did and informing the people what's really going on here and all the hard work you put into that. Could you imagine if that parking authority were allowed to run as it was with Scopoletti when they came here with that caucus? And thank God, you know what? That caucus was out here so the people could see it, just like you would want it, Mr. Loscombe. And those people saw everything he said. And let me tell you, they didn't have a budget. They had all these figures, but they didn't have any how they were spending it. They didn't have a clue. Like, it was so embarrassing. It's right there if anybody wants to look on the Scranton City Government website. Go to City Council and look at the minutes of the meetings and go back to when that meeting was. Try to find it and you'll see the minutes from that caucus with Mr. Scopoletti. He got like 80 some thousand dollars a year. Nobody knew why because he wouldn't say how the money was spent. So that was the best thing you did, Jack. And I'm glad you spoke up and I hope you still say something. Now this Pango situation, come on. They may have it now and they want to renew their contract. I'd like to know, why is it that you want these people? I'm not saying they're not good, but why isn't this going out for bid? It why? It was. it was. Oh, it was. So wh why, is it, why, is it, why is it that you want to, Mr. Loscombe, how do you feel about this? I, I don't know if you were here last week, but no, I, I, I definitely have some issues on, on some of the, the things that, uh, and, and I'm not against Pango. No, but there's my, some issues that, that have to be addressed. Those are the issues I'm referring to. I just don't to. see the urgency that's being pursued on this right now. But so, I'll, I'll address that later. Well, I hope everybody at home listens to what you say. But I could bet that this you three, Wexler, McGough, and Gone, will go right along with it because we don't know why. But there's a reason, a hidden agenda. And you say the uh, business administrator maybe recommends it, Bozzoni? The same man that recommended there got the loan from the bank, $2.3 million loan when he worked at Landmark Bank, and now the city's in a lawsuit with him. When the city council wasn't even aware of it, it was illegal. City council didn't even come in front of council and they got the $2.3 million loan from Landmark. Well, he didn't last there too long. But you're taking this guy's recommendations? Give me a break. And then you have this financial consultant that I mentioned many weeks ago, but it went right one ear and out the other. So when we come here, Mr. McGough, you don't even pay attention to what people say. You sit up there and you write. You know, you should pay attention to what people are saying. I am. And I shouldn't even say that because you don't care what we're saying because you never, ever, you're supposed to be representing the people. You're representing the mayor, yourself, and your other councilman other than Jack. I mean, I don't know who you're taking care of, but you know damn well it's somebody. Somebody important that you think is important. Now that deal with that financial consultant that got the contract of 2018 without a cap, that was definitely illegal because there's no money in the budget for it. Article 613 of the city code states that the money must be in the budget right now. Mr. Wexler, you're the finance chair and you sat there, you knew it was illegal and if it didn't, you should have. It's not illegal. Pardon me? It's not illegal. Oh yes, it is illegal. Did you read the article 613? I know it passed here. It's not illegal. It is illegal. Thank you. Mr. Menor, are you saying it's not illegal? Mr. Menor? Excuse me. May I ask Address him a question? You may I'm ask him. Okay. And don't you think uh, he should answer the people or no? It's not illegal. Pardon me? It's not illegal. Okay. I just want that on the record because I Thank really you. believe it is illegal. Thank and, you, Mr. And I, other things I think that you do illegally because you know we can't take it to court. So you just keep doing what you're doing and you don't care about the people or what they say. Your joke. Except Mr. Ross. Thank you. Doug Miller. You are right. <laughs> Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. A uh, few issues I have to take issue with here tonight. Uh, Good evening. Going back to some of the business from last week. Uh, you know, first on 7B, you know, Obviously, setting back and taking a look at this, I do have to agree with uh, you know Mr. Loscombe that uh, you know I don't see the need to have such a sense of urgency on this one. There are many questions to still be addressed. I think uh, yet again this is another situation where we're just voting blindly um, on a piece of legislation without having the proper uh, 
documentation and correspondence needed. Uh, you know, when we have sitting councilmen that still have questions uh, that have yet to be answered, I think that's a troubling thing when, you know, his colleagues want to go ahead and just ram this legislation as, you know, previous councils have had a history of doing without having knowledge and later on down the road it ends up causing a nightmare. And, you know, speaking of nightmares, that's what leads me to here, be here tonight. Uh, you know, I took real uh, serious issue with the statements by, uh, by Mr. Gawhan last week and him criticizing uh, the way Mr. Loscombe voted on the uh, parking authority default. And I just felt compelled that I needed to re uh, revisit this issue because those of us that were around that, at that time uh, know full well that situation and the events that took place and what led to the parking authority uh, going into default. So for those of us that were around back then, uh, as I was and a lot of other people seated here, we were actually you know, at these meetings. There, were a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, as we know, mismanagement that took place uh, throughout city government. And you know, when we talk about the default of the parking authority causing all of the city's financial problems and, and uh, you know, causing a fear in the banking community, I just think that that statement in itself is totally ludicrous. I think that anybody that maybe took the chance to pay an ounce of attention would know that the problems in this city have been caused due to fiscal mismanagement uh, by the previous administration, a decade's worth of mismanagement. If we take a trip back to 2010, we remember that the incoming council majority cut taxes by roughly 11 percent. The council at that time, led by Mrs. Evans and Mr. Loskin was seated here, uh, our finance chair, uh, Mr. Joyce and Mr. Rogan and, and McGough were, uh, were here. And if you could recall, council uh, cut the taxes by roughly 11 percent with the understanding that the city had the ability to do so, that a steady revenue stream was coming in according to previous budgets. And that enabled the council at that time to go ahead and cut taxes. The weeks following that, uh, the council, with the assistance from uh, their uh, council solicitor, Attorney Boyd Hughes, realized that those budgets that they were basing uh, their decisions off of were, in fact, inaccurate, make-believe. And so, if we could recall, that tax increase uh, basically, uh, you know, was, was taken back in, in the following, uh, the next year's budget uh, due to that. And so, when you, when you look at that situation in itself, I think that can signify to us that that was what really caused the brunt of the city's financial problems. It was the mismanagement of the previous administration that budgets that were voted on by previous rubber stamp councils weren't in fact real. And these were budgets that always had Pell's blessing. And then we sit here today and we wonder why we're in the situation we're in. And when it comes to the default of the parking authority, if we can recall, that parking authority was ran reckless recklessly getting any correspondence from Mr. Scopoletti or any of his minions down there was impossible. As a matter of fact, if we can all recall, those of us that were actually here and paid attention, we can recall one-page budgets coming from the parking authority that didn't explain anything. They weren't even budgets. They were Mickey Mouse budgets, budgets that a, a senior class officer would put together. Didn't explain anything. There was no transparency whatsoever. All they would do was just squander money, money was spent, there was no oversight. Council was left in the dark. The administration did not cooperate with the council at the time. So, you know, people like Mr. Loscombe and his colleagues at the time, you know, basically uh, had the wool pulled over their eyes, so to speak. They had no idea what was going on. And the only way that that council at the time was going to be able to get full control and have a firm understanding and idea of what was going on was to take the checkbook away. And that's exactly what they did. Mr. Loscombe, Mrs. Evans, Mr. Joyce, and Mr. Rogan did just that. They took that checkbook away. They stopped the bleeding. They prevented the parking authority from driving the city deeper and deeper and deeper in debt. And I have to ask people like Mr. Gawhan tonight, who want to talk about, quote, on the record. This is the record. This is factual. This is the factual record. This is actually what transpired. And I would just have to ask you and anybody else that opposed this at the time, just think where this city would be today had, this, had the previous council not done what it did. It would be, it still to this day be mismanaged. Mr. Scopoletti and all this peons he had 
okay, millions and millions of dollars would, have been, would continue to be squandered. There'd be no control over what's going on. And now with the receiver in place, thanks to Mr. Loscombe and his colleagues, we now have control. The checkbook's been taken away. And whether you want to agree with that or not, you know, is totally uh, up to you. But that's the real truth. That's what took place. We could have let ahead and let them continue going down the path they were going. But just think where we were. That had nothing to do with frightening the banking community. The banking community is frightened because the Thank city you. has a, a history of squandering tax dollars. And that's where we Thank truly you, are. Mr. And I look forward to listening to Mr. Loscombe's uh, presentation later on. And that we could get answers, because Mr. Loscombe, I, you know, I see you're in a, a position here where you're sort of acting Mr. like Miller. the lone person here. And you know, I really Mr. look Miller. forward to hearing what you say, and I hope your questions get answered, because they deserve to get answered. And you shouldn't have the door slammed in your face because your colleagues want to be political and want to continue to play games. And that's the problem we have. So I look forward to hearing your comments, Mr. Loscombe. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dobson. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident. Taxes paid. I appreciate it. Anyone with some extra cash laying around would do the same. Um, on the uh, parking tax, I would strongly recommend no exemptions. Even if you have to go to court, it's too bad. They're making a profit on it. And uh, that it costs the, the people that park their money. Uh, a lot of things have been said, and they do pertain to the city of Scranton. Act 47, they're talking about an EMT tax. Well, I'd like to point out that $156 is 1% of 15 grand a year or minimum wage. It's about 0.5% of 50 grand, maybe. 0.47. That's 47 hundredths of a percent. And if you make 90 grand, it's 0.168 thousandths of a percent. It's 168 thousandths of a percent. So now, do I agree with the uh, commuter tax? I don't think so, because you're kind of holding taking people hostage. And uh, that happen to have jobs in Scranton. Now, what's the answer? The state. I want to see uh, people gather together with the municipal authorities, uh, uh, associations listed in the Sunday Times, and sue in federal court, sue the state of Pennsylvania that their uh, requirement that we support all these nonprofits is unconstitutional, and we need that money replaced. I can't keep paying everybody else's taxes. Like I said last week, unconstructible lot. I can't use it for anything but a grass or to park my doggy on, and it's uh, $551 if I pay exactly on time. Uh, it's crazy. It's totally, my wife is already to a point where she says, let it go back. You didn't get anything for 40 years on it from 1962. Let it go. You know, so she's the boss. We know who the boss is in our house, damn it. <laughs> but uh, Act 76, that's another solution that's been pushed. And now, Pennsylvania income tax for the average person will go up to 4.5 percent, none of which is tax deductible unless you top $12,200 a year in expenses. Uh, so, you know, the guy at the top gets to charge that all, and the guy at the bottom, I mean, too bad. Too bad. And uh, it will increase the 7% sales tax we had uh, at the uh, taxpayers uh, conference on it. And they couldn't answer whether a can of Campbell's soup would cost 7% more. So it's something to think about. When they can't answer it, I think not. I think I'll pass on that idea. And uh, the Sunday Times, I have to compliment them. 
And finally, this is the first time in 10 years or 12 years that I've been receiving this grant time that they have admitted that we are 33% tax exempt in this city. So you guys have your jobs picked out for you, you know? And uh, it's, uh, I also want to point out on uh, uh, the uh, EMT tax, it should be a monthly only tax. It should be by the month if it's deducted, because if they deduct it in March and I get laid off on April 15th, money's gone. And, you know, I worked a third of the year in Scranton and I have to go find a job elsewhere. Maybe I'll find another job in Scranton, maybe not. So that should actually be deducted on a monthly basis and not as a lump sum. Uh, on the park authority, the only thing I had to say about it was the park authority looked like the, the, the key fopper commission. Uh, I, 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 to refresh everybody's memory out there in TV land, it looked like uh, the, the mobsters when they're hauled into Congress. Don't answer this, don't answer that. But there is, uh, I'd like to point out, in the library, there probably is a copy of that CD. So if you're interested, uh, try and watch it, acquire it and watch it. Thank you and have a good night. And I'll be back, hopefully. And uh, don't forget, trade packs are, once again, we have enough joblessness in this town, it's 9%. So national issues are local issues. Like the man said, all politics is local. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Elman. Ronnie Elman, in case you forgot. <laughs> Welcome back. You know, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people have asked me why I quit coming down. Why are you smiling at that? I said, welcome yeah, back. Yeah. You don't believe me? Yeah. No, well, I believe you. My two sons I see you out and about. Yeah, my two over sons. <laughs> I, I quit coming because I just feel like coming down here to me is like beating your head on a stone wall. Nobody listens. Nothing is being accomplished. I'm no master of, of orientation, but I think some of these people that come and speak before you are, and they, 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 they have all kinds of intelligence suggestions for the city, and nobody acknowledges this. It's, it's just a sad thing to me, so I, just, I decided people have had enough of me complaining about the universities and all, so I quit coming. But allow me to make this unmistakably clear. I, I support you people, and I support this, the city, but it's just, it's not going nowhere. You know, it's not, it's not becoming a, a Hazleton. We are a Hazleton. The, the neighborhoods are in decline. It, it's, the foreclosures are like 60% up, you know. It just, it, it, nobody addresses all these things. When people aren't interested, in sacrificing now for somebody 10 or 20 years down the road. There's, it, it just, it, you people just don't talk to people like I do when I go to the grocery store and all. It, it, it's, it's, or, or at the club when I eat lunch. You know, then I read in the paper this ridiculous remark that the country's on a down. Everybody knows that. Then, then last week the paper said we shouldn't be taxing non-residents, but it's okay for them to use our streets and, and schools and hospitals and parks and insurance, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't tax them for nothing. That's, that's the general feeling, you know. The, the, these universities don't think they should be taxed and all these phonies, you, you got a, dozens of nothing, plain phony 
uh, businesses hiding behind the Pure Charity Act that they're getting away with murder. But I didn't come to assess Mr. Cross and Mr. Armoso. I would like to say last week we lost a piece of property that was over a million two hundred thousand dollars to the university, so it would be off the tax rolls. Uh, the people that, that had it, they could take it off their income tax for years to come. The university can rent it out or do what they want with it. How are we going to make up that one piece of property? You know, you talk about another 57% tax increase. The people can't stand it no more. You know, it's, it's, I know that it's, it, I, I don't know what you can do. But like I said, I, I came to implore you people to do something about the speeding cars on North Main Avenue. It's like a racetrack from, from about Market Street to, to shifts. I see cars day and night go by my house 60, 70, 80 <laughs> miles an hour, just one after another. It's all day and all night. And it's not the police fault. When a police car comes by, I see a lot of police cars. You know, everybody slows down. You, you need some unmarked cars to start giving some huge tickets. And to, to make matters worse, there's no curb, so everybody parks on the sidewalk. You have to walk in the street. I watch children in the morning when I walk Sluggo, little kids and their mamas up there in the street because of illegally parked cars. It, it, it's a dangerous situation. And, and, and now that school's out, a bunch of cold stone jerks have given children two and four wheelers that are all over North Main Avenue. I seen a little girl, I know she's not four years old, in a little tiny quad that looks like a little toy going down North Main Avenue a couple Saturdays ago. Now that the kids have been skateboarding by my house on the white line. It's some kind of new fad. You know, it's just a matter of time that somebody gets injured bad or, or worse. And they'll be putting up the little crosses and the teddy bears and all. It's sad. It's coming. It's going to happen. Thank you, Mr. Elman. I, I saw the paper where Dixon City, or, uh, no, it was Dunmore got a, a new machine to, for their traffic, and the paper said that we had one. I wish you'd bring it to North Main Avenue and start using it. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Thank and you. If, if anybody, if you people didn't go to that car show, and I have nothing to do with the club Father's Day, you missed a wonderful affair. There must have been $10 million worth of cars there. It, uh, Scranton ought to be proud to have them come to NAOC once a year. Thank you. Thank you. Murray Schumann. Uh, good evening, Council. Murray Schumacher. Good evening. <coughs> uh, first, the agenda items will um, I believe that a complete comparison of all fees uh, between uh, Pango and the person who made the, or the company that made the, the presentation at caucus last week uh, should be available before this item is voted on. Uh, it's only fair to the customers as it seems that the, uh, the, if this were to go through, that it's the customers who would be paying a whole lot of money and um, more than the other one. And I think you owe it to the, the customers of the city to do that. So I do hope that uh, 7B will be tabled tonight, and I hope that the comparison will be available uh, very shortly, maybe next Wednesday night. Um, and on 6A, this, uh, the amending section three, if I'm reading this correctly, does it state that if somebody has five parking, parking spaces, 
they're going to have to pay fifty dollars and somebody who has 125 is going to pay fifty dollars okay you can answer during motions but that's the way it appears to me and the educational parking i am um, I don't think that's right. If they're if they are charging their students to pay to for, to park, that is not educational. That is a parking lot. Any way you cut it. Um, and on C five uh, C, uh, could you tell me during motion, someone, what the nature of the what the nature of the improvements are at Fellows Park? Because I, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine what it was a playground before, and then it was dangerous. And I know I took the little guy over there, and that, we left, and now it's something else. And so I'm interested in what else could be done, and I would like to know that. And now I guess, uh, Mr. Gawin, you're filling in for Mr. Rogan tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Uh, it's been several months over a year since we had a report on the OECD loans, and uh, I would like to get them updated. Last year, on the 28th of February, Mr. Rogan reported that he had the loan portfolio for those who had been, uh, that were still open, but they were paid up to date but then it also said they may be delinquent or they may be ahead, but they're not in litigation. There were 31, um, 31 loans. The following week, he reported on the loans that were in litigation. There were 17 of them for a total of $1.7 million. And so I would ask, uh, Mr. Rogan to report back on the following things. Uh, first of all, are those loans that were current in March of 2013 still current and or have they had any uh, terms and conditions changed? I know Alexander's, for instance, their interest rate was reduced to a half a percent and uh, that was supposed to be changed at as of the end of this month, and I don't haven't seen anything come before council. So I would also like to know the status of the Alexander uh, interest renegotiation. And then of those that were in litigation, I would like to know of those, what did I say, 14, 14 loans, whether they have uh, completed the process and if they're closed and the well, I'd like to know what the outcome is are they did we gain any money back or did we lose they have to write off 1.7 million dollars so um, if you would pass that on to Mr. Rogan this is I Ms. Will. Schumacher yeah um, would you please put, those I will in, put writing. That in writing and speaking of that there are several outstanding from several weeks ago I've heard from Mr. Gaughan uh, but some of the other people uh, I, Joe, I still I, have one. I have one outstanding on the landfill. And when do we expect to hear on that one? Uh, I'm, I'm working on it. This week we were working on the Pango. Uh, okay. Um, okay. May I, just one more. That's time. Please. That's time critical. The rest I'll bring back next week. Um, I would like to know or remind people out there that have a concern with the cell phone towers that the clock is running, that 30-day clock that the Scranton Times reported that was in a, in a legal notice, re, um, comments to the FCC. It's not an easy process, but if you care, the clock is running, and um, I wish you luck in, in doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else who wishes to address council? Good evening, Council. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, my name is Lee Morgan. I figured I'd say that since you asked me once before. Um, the first thing I have here is I'd like to inform the residents of the city and for people who live outside the city that there's a spaghetti dinner at Villa Marie's this Sunday from 12 to 6 to support Kids Swim Free. Um, and I hope people would attend. Um, the other thing I have here is there's some kind of discussion 
took that was taking place when I was sitting here about legality of a vote, and Mr. Menorah said that it was legal. And I do respect you, Mr. Menorah, but only a judge determines what's legal. And unless the residents of this city go to court and object to anything the city government does, it's all legal. And, you know, Mr. Gahan, you know, I hope you'd question a lot more things about what's taken place in this city over a very, very long period of time. Because I really believe there needs to be a very wide investigation into where all the city's tax revenue was gone for, let's say, 40 years. And where all the federal funds and all the spending has gone to. Because in my opinion, you know, like reading the paper today, I saw how they're going to try to allegedly sue the PEL over the pension. Well, I don't know what kind of immunity the PEL has, but the residents of this city paid taxes so that those pensions could be funded, and they weren't. Now, in my opinion, for the city employees to really blame the city for what's taking place, they supported these candidates who ran for office and didn't fund their pensions. And for all the wild, uh, for lack of better term, pipe dreams that um, city government and city councils have had over decades, they've led us to where we are now. I mean, you know, let's not forget that at one time there's a city called Detroit that's just, they're going to turn that back into farmland. A third of that city allegedly is going to be turned back into farmland. Packard was there once. That's the city that helped this country win World War II. That's what made it possible for us to beat the Japanese and the Germans and supply everybody because Henry Ford taught us how to manufacture there on an assembly line. The Germans were peace meddling things together. Their, their, their production levels were nowhere near ours. It gave us the ability for land lease and all the other things that were done during that war. And when you take a look at that city and where it is, maybe the Scrantonians here will get a good picture of what's coming for Scranton. Because it won't be on that scale. But you can see that the city of Scranton's population has declined by 50%. And I know a lot of truck drivers because evidently I am one. They don't come here in the city and do any large amount of pickups anymore. This city is just so completely downtrodden, it's unbelievable. We have children and people in this city paying to swim in a pool that their tax, pay, their tax dollars built. Just makes no sense. We have an inability to use the Home Rule Charter it was designed as it was designed to issue subpoenas and do investigations. And then we wonder where we are and how we got there. Look at this council and this mayor. If they're going to come up with a plan, they have to pick up the documents of our government and use them. And if they're not willing to do that, then the sheep who live in this city, OK, because sheep don't revolt. They just keep coming and coming and coming, keep getting sheared and sheared, OK? And it gets to the point where they have no money to go out and buy a hamburger for themselves because the government just took it in taxes. And we've got all these new schemes about how we're not going to commuter tax people because, to be quite obvious, I don't think a court would agree, agree to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an end around and, and just come up with a new way to raise taxes so it won't be challenged in the courts. And the legislature, they don't want this pension because they can't fund their own. I mean, the reality is that America is very broken politically. Two organizations are responsible for that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. The bulk of voters are independent, independent voters now, but they're locked out of the primaries in places where they can make real changes and just recast this country. It's time to throw the Democrats and Republicans out of office. They haven't let us anywhere good. Where do you know of a country where you export all your jobs? If you read the history of America, John Deere created steel in this country because we weren't allowed to by the British Crown to make steel here. We were only supposed to import the things they wanted us to have. We need to know the history of our own country. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to address council? Fifth order, 5-8, motions. Mr. Wexler. Thank you, Mr. McGough. Um, <clears throat> first thing I'd like to mention is uh, congratulate the Scranton Fire Department on an outstanding save 
um, the other night in North Scranton. Uh, although two homes were damaged, the rest of the neighborhood was uh, uh, protected and there was no loss of life there, which is a great job. Um, second thing I'd like to mention is that after we mentioned it last week at the meeting, the water has been repaired at Connors Park, uh, which will allow the summer program for the children to proceed with the use of water at that. And uh, I'll have some other things to say uh, during legislation. Thank you. Mr. Lasker? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Just a couple of things, a uh, couple uh, item, agenda items that were mentioned this evening. Um, Let's see, I'll start with 5C on the, um, the improvements for Fellows Park. Uh, that was mentioned by one of our speakers. And just looking in the back up, it, it's for introduction tonight, I will introduce it. And in the back up it says work to include purchase and installation of recreational equipment, safety surfacing, and enabling further American with Disability accessibility following all safety guidelines on South Main Avenue and Scranton's west side. Uh, that's all I have at this point, but uh, I will try and get some more information on that. Uh, the other item was 6A, and last week I said I would try to get together with the solicitor to ask some questions on this. Unfortunately, uh, this past week I've had some personal situations that uh, didn't allow me to do so. But I do have issue with the uh, exemption of educational parking. Um, again, they're charging their students and faculty to park in these places. Um, no different than, than another parking business. So in, in, in light, I, I believe there is a, a lawsuit pending. But uh, I, I don't think that should change the legislation at this time. I think that would only feed into the, law, the lawsuit, personally. I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I don't agree with section one, and I, I, I do have questions about the, uh, the fee change for $50 from a dollar per space too. Will that hurt the small park or, or whatever? So at this point, I will be voting no on that because you know I just disagree with some of those issues. And next, I would like to apologize uh, for last week. And the reason I'm apologizing is that I do get too passionate on some issues. I take a lot of issues to heart because I feel I'm representing the majority of the taxpayers out there. And sometimes if I feel they're getting a raw deal, I will say it. I may be wrong. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not always right. The thing is, at the end of the day, and again, we don't agree a lot of times. I don't agree with speakers a lot of times. But at the end of the day, we do have to come together and work for the greater good. There's going to be issues we agree on, issues we don't agree on. But on this, uh, the issue that I brought up last week uh, with the uh, parking contract, I still, I still have a lot of questions concerning that. And my fellow councilman who was unable to be here this evening uh, agreed with me to table this motion. Unfortunately, he's not here this evening, but he did speak to me by phone and said if he was here, he would vote to table because um, he still has, has several questions on it. And, uh, you know, I, I think it, there's some serious issues. We, if we're pursuing something this simple and we have some major issues coming ahead of us, I would just hope we look at everything as seriously as this. I did write a letter to my fellow council members. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get it to them till this morning. Again, you know, if anybody wants to speak to me about my personal week, I would be glad to do that. I'm not going to broadcast it over the air. But I was at a disadvantage this week, and I was able to get this information together this morning. But since we like to put things on the record, I would like to put my letter on the record at this meeting here. And the letter is as follows. Dear City Council members, I have great respect and admiration for our business administrator, whom I believe is underpaid and overworked for the job he is doing. However, I take issue with his recommendation of Pango Mobile Parking over Mobile Now and the other two vendors who submitted bids and were discounted because of missing affidavits 
as a paper cell provider by the city of Scranton. By history, Pango has had the distinct advantage because they have been operating in Scranton for a year now. I have to question the fact that this company was even provided with a contract last year, given the fact that there was never an RFP request for that type of service at that time. This contract was provided solely and unilaterally by former Mayor Chris Daugherty without any discussion with or knowledge of said agreement with City Council, the legislative body of the city. It was that City Council majority that began the push for accountability and enhancements to our on-street parking program well over four years ago that opened the way for improvements with our parking both financially and technically. With the shakeup of the Scranton Parking Authority, it has finally allowed us an opportunity to become more progressive. The Scranton Parking Authority under the former administration was extremely uncooperative with the City Council's numerous requests for financial information, all the while providing us with sham budgets. The Scranton Parking Authority continued to cost the city and its taxpayers more and more annually as they were allowed to borrow their way into oblivion. The last city council majority has been used as a scapegoat for the financial institution's reluctance to loan the city money, using the default of the Scranton Parking Authority as the reason. The fact is that the city of Scranton was in a financial quagmire years before the Scranton Parking Authority default. As stated previously, the Scranton Parking Authority was allowed to borrow money from banks well in excess of the garage's worth and some loans from banks with no guarantee of payment from the city. By the way, the SPA bond payments have been made on schedule. The previous city council majority has been responsible for saving taxpayers a significant amount of money by stopping the bleeding at the Scranton Parking Authority and by forcing the past administration to seek bids for on-street parking meter management and upgrades. The past administration was going to provide central parking, a much more lucrative contract, until the last city council majority stepped in and urged the, urged the administration to seek bids for the on-street meter management, thereby guaranteeing a more taxpayer-favorable contract, which was awarded to Republic Parking, who have been doing a commendable job to date. So with all this that has been going on, it is much to my chagrin that the current business administrator under a new mayor has made a recommendation to keep Pango as a pay-by-sell provider when there are still questions as, how as to how they are originally contracted by the city. I have some comments and questions for my colleagues on city council to ponder before making a final decision on the pay-by-sell agreement. Number one, under the original agreement with Pango and the city of Scranton, Pango is charging 12% of collected parking receipts. Why, after forcing an RFP, are they willing to reduce their fee to 5%? Has the city not requested an R had the city not requested an RFP, the Pango contract would renew for another, another two years at 9%. Number two, Exhibit A, page seven of the Pango agreement states, fees for the text reminder system our dollar reminder service are $1.99 as of the effective date, but are subject to change during the term. Text reminders are automatically charged to each active customer's account on a monthly basis. Number three, there's a nine cents fee charged to the city for every check that a parking enforcement officer performs on a vehicle to see if it is valid or not. Number four, the Pango proposal, page 9 of 97, item 4.4 states, the vendor may charge customers a convenience fee to recoup, sign, decal production and installation. Number five, the Pango proposal provides two options of payments. Option one, a 10% convenience fee paid by the parker. Option number two, 5% of the parking receipts to be paid by the city the business administrator has elected to go with option two. Mobile now does not charge for the text reminder service. It is free to users. 
Mobile now does not charge for parking enforcement officers' car validation checks. They are free. Mobile now can alter the 30 cent fee in any way instead of 15 cents per parker and 15 per city. One example can be 20 cents per parker and 10 per cent city. That can be altered. Mobile now's proposal has no hidden fees. I have attached a three page statement from, Noble, from Mobile now explaining such. As we heard at last week's caucus from representatives from Mobile now, they would also offer the same terms as Pango on a cost sharing plan with the city to upgrade the enforcement devices. In looking over the Pango proposal, I'm left with a few more questions that should be answered prior to any vote on this contract. Under the RFP requirements, the vendors pay by cell services shall be PCI DSS certified. Proposers shall at submit a PCI DSS and PCI-PA DSS level one compliant certificate with their proposals. These are certifications that their security with their uh, online credit and stuff like that is, is up to date. Pango did provide an attestation document, but no certificates with their proposal. Furthermore, they don't seem to be PCI DSS certified at all in the US. At least the official visa da database of US certified companies does not list them. The authority would, pre this is another recommendation or requirement. The authority would prefer that vendors provide us with an attestation by an objective third party stating that the application has been tested for common security vulnerabilities. Pango provided an attestation dated October 6th, 2013. Typically, such attestations are valid for three months at a time. Thus, it appears that Pango has presented a document that is no longer valid. In their list of clients, more particularly international clients, Pango references Cologne, Germany on page 77 of 97 of their proposal. I happen to have some friends in Germany. However, it appears that research on Cologne shows that Pango operations in this city were closed down around March 31st of 2014. This may raise questions about a possible misrepresentation in their proposal. In closing, I cannot understand the urgency to vote on this contract until these issues have been resolved. Pango has agreed to continue their service to the city until a contract has been approved. After all, it is a further benefit to Pango as their fees will be con continue to be paid at 9% and not the reduced fee of 5%. So I respectfully request that this legislation be tabled until these issues are resolved. Jack Lascombe, Scranton City Council, and I've attached a three-page uh, list of items from Mobile Now, and they're available for anyone who's, who's interested. Um, basically some of the same information that I explained here. Again, I want what's right for everyone here. I have no qualms about Pango. I'm, I'm not that technically savvy. I just want to see that everyone's getting a fair deal, the city and those who are using the program. And, and some of these were brought up by complaints that I have copies of that were brought up for different issues. Uh, one was a security issue. Uh, that's how I ended up looking into that, and the other was a uh, uh, problem with earlier. It was it was in the newspaper about some issues with with uh, the Pango uh, thing. But personally, and and I'm not an expert, but I think some of these issues here do deserve further investigation to the benefit of everyone here. And I do not, as I repeat, see the urgency not to table this until these issues are resolved. Again, the winner in this here, if we delay it, is Pango, because they're being paid more now than if they were awarded the contract today. So beyond any realm, I cannot understand why it would not be tabled, because there is no urgency at this point. And respectfully, at this, at this time, as I said, Mr. Rogan, would have seconded my vote, I am requesting that we table this issue until these answers 
are provided. Is that a motion? I'm seeking, yes, I'm asking for a motion to table. Is there a second to the motion? There is no second. That's all I have. Thank you. Hi up, Mr. Gunn. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a few issues with what Mr. Lascom said. Um, he's asking what what is the urgency? There is no urgency. We have known about this since May 30th. We all received in an email the recommendation from our business administrator, Dave Bolzoni, May 30th. That's almost four weeks that Mr. Lascom has had to ask any questions, anything. He, he sent us a letter. We got it today, this morning, with all of these questions that he wants us to ponder. If, I mean, Mr. Lascom, did you, did you speak to Mr. Bolzoni? Did you ask him these questions? As I respectfully said, I'm not going to broadcast on television what my personal situation has been the past week. But I do work 12-hour shifts, seven straight. I did have personal issues with a family member that was uh, ill this week. Uh, I don't have, this is not a full-time position for me, unfortunately. We do it full-time, but uh, I asked the questions. When I got this proposal, it takes some research that I did on my own to get to this point and get to these questions. That's still besides the point, whether, to, whether I had four weeks or not. We have 10 more weeks to pass this legislation, Look, or 20 all, weeks. All I'm, listen, all I'm saying is everybody up here works, everyone has personal lives, that's, it's not our, that's not our problem. You have four weeks to do your homework on things. You yes, didn't, you did, well, let me finish, because it, he's making it seem like, you know, something underhanded's going on here. Like, as he said last week, he had time to do his homework. He didn't do his homework. That's the bottom line. Please. He didn't ask. Now, now you're making accusations. but. Please. Whatever. Well, all I'm saying is he had the chance to ask Mr. Bolzoni. He had four weeks. We found this out on May 30th, and he didn't ask him. So that's all I have on that. Uh, Mrs. Schumacher had asked for an update on the Harrison Avenue Bridge Project. Council had reached out to Mr. Poshis, who responded that he believed the Bunker Hill Bridge was owned by Lackawanna County, and that the let date, uh, the awarding of the contract, had been moved to September 11, 2014 due to delays in getting utility clearances and PUC clearance. Uh, two weeks ago, a gentleman contacted me regarding a street light that was out in front of his house. Council had contacted DPW and Joyce Electrical, uh, fixed the gentleman's problem. They were a little backed up, so they should be getting out to everyone. The street sweeper is scheduled to be in South Scranton from June 30th to July 3rd. Cherry Street to Breck Street, including all avenues and streets. And just a reminder that the street sweeping schedule is on the city's website at www.scrantonpa.gov under the DPW link. An update on the permit parking legislation for Prescott Avenue. I believe that that legislation should be on the agenda by next week, and then we will table it to allow for a public hearing on the matter. Uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to the families affected by the fire in North Scranton this week. And finally, I re will reserve the rest of my comments for agenda item 5C. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gunn. Um, a couple of items. Uh, first of all, the, um, someone talked about the Composite Pension Board and the minutes from it. Um, as President of Council, I am a member of the Composite Pension Board. I generally do not attend those meetings. I have one or two. Um, the city clerk, by proxy, attends those meetings. Um, but the, the minutes of the meetings are made available to, to all of the council members, as a matter of fact. And um, generally, uh, if there is any question that takes place during those meetings, um, the city clerk will address it to me, and um, it can be resolved in that way. But hopefully the, um, the minutes of, the, of that meeting will be provided and whatever questions there may be can be answered. Um, uh, 
As far as the the legislation tonight on the mobile parking, uh, by contract, had nothing been done, uh, the contract with Pango would have extended for another two years, the current contract. It was deemed early in the this administration in there were a number of meetings held with various parking entities and the issue of mobile parking and the fact that the Pango contract was expiring came up. It was through the business administrator and the administration felt that the best way to legitimize the process rather than just extending the Pango contract and council would have would have had no say in the matter uh, it was put out or RFPs were issued and all providers were allowed the opportunity to submit proposals proposals were received it was the recommendation after all the proposals were received Pango mobile now being the the final two it was determined by the business administrator and others that the best proposal for the city would be from Pango, that they were the most responsible bidder. The recommendation had nothing to do with prior history of parking in the city of Scranton. This was a new administration and a new council what happened in the past had no significance to this proposal or this recommendation and the recommendation was based solely on the proposals that were made it was deemed the pango was the most responsible legislation was prepared and given to council and yes all of council had an opportunity to review the proposals they were available all of council had the opportunity to ask questions um, of anyone uh, on this legislation and there is no urgency it is simply the matter of doing business it was given to us it was voted upon last week in first reading now it comes up for a second reading if people are unsatisfied with the recommendation they have the opportunity to vote no. That is how the process works. And therefore, and that was my reason for not tabling it. Our, our job is to vote yes or no on these, on the legislation. And therefore, it, stay, it will stay on the agenda and we will vote on it later this evening. Um, just a couple of other responses um, as, as far as the brought up about the history of the parking authority and all just for the record um, the debt service to the parking authority following the default vote the vote on the default we are now paying eight, approximately eight hundred thousand dollars more per year on debt service than we were prior um, also uh, so it, it has not necessarily that has not necessarily saved us any money, um, and that's all. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. McGowan. Yes. Can I just make a quick comment? Ab absolutely. Uh, just just to go back, you said the past history has nothing to do with this. The only reason I bring up the past history is because that was in a recommendation from Mr. Bolzoni. He mentioned the history of, of Pango being here as a, a favorable. Uh, issue and I don't think we're here to just blindly accept everybody's recommendation without researching it or reviewing it or you know I mean or we would be going back to being called rubber stampers uh, I think we all have a duty to to research these issues get the questions answered and you know if this was a, a matter of yes no that's one thing but there are some serious issues here. S issues specifically on the security of the people who park here. Not alone 
the financial issues, but the, seri the serious issue of credit card access. And that's why I so adamantly want these issues resolved. But apparently, I'm the only one other than, unfortunately, yes, we have our vote. Yes, no, yes, no. Mr. Rogan is not here this evening to cast his vote, but I apologize, but that's, that's the way I feel. And, and the, the assumption that you make that no one else asks questions is, is not valid. Uh, all of us um, did our research, asked questions, and came to a conclusion on this. Um, whether it was a yes or a no conclusion, will remain to be seen. So I may That's ask, you're not, the, the rest of this panel is not concerned about the security issues that have been presented here this evening. But why are you presenting them to us and not the business administrator? You've had since May 30th. That's what, I'm, that's what we're trying to tell you. And you say we accept, we're accepting. Because we're voting on it, not the business administrator. We're but voting on it. But you've had questions. You already got his, you already have his it's recommendation. It's you I have to sell. Not the business administrator. Yeah, but you have your own right. personal questions that you failed to ask. You, you got us a letter this morning. No, th I told you there was a reason for well, that. I apologize. All right. Yeah, four weeks. Uh, We're not doing the, our the job. Question is, the question was, that, yes, uh, I will answer for myself that I am satisfied that Pango was the most responsible bidder and I am prepared to vote. And I feel that the questions that I had were adequately answered. That wasn't the question I asked, though. The question I asked was, are you concerned about the security issue that was presented here? I don't, I don't believe that there is one. I don't believe there's a Santa Claus either. But Excuse me. We go. That, that's insulting. I, I apologize. I, I, I do take that. You back. asked me a question. I, I, I gave agree. you a responsible answer. And, and again, folks, you know, because I disagree. we agree and disagree, but we do work together. In the long run, we have to do what's for the better issue. I may not be victorious on this, and that, that's why I'm here. That's why we have this vote. Not to say I'm happy, because I think it does impact a lot of people, but, but I do apologize, Mr. McGough. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Lassner. Uh, Please. 5B, for introduction and ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to enter into lease agreements with West Scranton Little League for various Little League, T-Ball, Farm League, Teener League, Missy League, Baseball and Softball for use of city-owned property in connection with approved Little League, T-Ball, Farm League, Teener League, Missy League, Baseball and Softball activities for a three-year period commencing April 15, 2014 and ending April 14, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5C for introduction of resolution ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to the County of Lackawanna for a Lackawanna County Community Reinvest Program grant for the improvement project at Fellows Park and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials to accept the grant, if successful, to execute a grant agreement and accept and disperse the grant funds for the City of Scranton Improvement Project at Fellows Park. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Um, I'm always in favor of improving our parks, and I think recreation is very important in the city of Scranton. However, this project to put a playground in Fellows Park doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, the city put CDBG funds into Fellows Park in the fall of 2011, and the project was completed in May of 2012. They took the playground equipment out of Fellows Park because it had a 20-year history of being a magnet for illegal activity, uh, such as drugs, among other things. The project in 2011 addressed the immediate need for a safe, accessible play area with safety surfacing, an area for parking with ADA accessibility, drainage correction, security lighting, and site amenities such as benches and trash receptacles. The pavilion was also painted and repaired. 
this grant that the city will be receiving from Lackawanna County in the amount, in the amount of $10,000 is for work that includes the purchase and installation of recreational equipment. It doesn't specify exactly what that will be. Also, safety surfacing and enabling further ADA accessibility. Uh, the grant application doesn't specify exactly how they will enable, enable further ADA accessibility. Again, I'm not sure why we're putting money into a park that was just renovated and putting playground equipment back in when it was an issue in the past that neighbors complained about. Uh, the other factor that plays in here is that the proposed playground is prohibited based on Fellows Park historical designation. Um, and another reason that the playground equipment was removed in 2011. The site has stayed in federal significance based on the role of Mr. Fellows during the American Revolution. He transported government papers that are now known to be the Constitution of the United States. Since Joseph Fellow Jr. is still buried underneath the monument, it is considered a historic cemetery. Karen Foster, president of the Westside Hyde Park Neighborhood Group, spoke with Mary Ann Moran Sabakinas, director of the Lackawanna Historical Society, who confirmed the historic cemetery designation and provided links to the information. She also provided a copy of Eileen Freeman's book that chronicles the history of the Fellows Park property. Thomas Murray's West Granton High School 10th grade class researched the history of the Fellow, Fellows family and submitted an application to the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission for a historical marker to be put at Fellows Park. The site was approved and received a mini grant in 2006-2007 from the Lackawanna Heritage Valley Authority for a purchase and installation of the Fellows Park Pennsylvania Historical Marker. In closing, given these historical facts that I have pointed out relating, relating to Fellows Park, I would urge the mayor to reconsider the nature of this proposed project. I will be voting yes to introduce this resolution, and this past week I sent my questions and concerns to the administration for their review. Thank you. Just on a question? Yes. Uh, see, we do agree. I have to agree with Mr. Gahan on this, and I know he's familiar with it because he was with OECD when they did the last project, and that was just pretty recently, a few years ago. Uh, that's why I had, I, I do have some questions on it myself, and, and I appreciate the research you did as far as the historical aspect and, and stuff like that, but, uh, but it does, you know, parks are good, and, and, and money and grants are good when we need them, where we need them. But to just throw random money around just to do it, I, I would hope that's not what we're looking at doing here. Uh, perhaps that $10,000 could be used in some other area of the city uh, to a much greater benefit. But, but I do agree with uh, Mr. Gahan's comments. I will be voting to introduce it, but uh, I'll be waiting to hear some, some answers. Thank you. Uh, and, and yes, uh, if, if the money is being used to somehow make it more accessible um, for handicapped and exact, I don't know exactly what that would be, um, I, I would be m more than in favor of doing that. Um, but uh, there are some questions, obviously, about what it was and what the, the proposal may be. Are we returning it to? a situation that was untenable to begin with, um, for what we need is uh, a more definitive idea of what exactly is going to be done at the park rather than just a, a statement of improvements. Uh, we really should determine whether, in fact, they will be improvements mm -hmm. or that they would return it to a detrimental situation. Um, all those in favor of introductions signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A reading by title, file of the council number 30, 2014, an ordinance amending file of the council number 30, 2012, entitled an ordinance imposing a tax for general revenue purposes on operators of parking spaces at the rate of 15% upon each parking transaction and establishing annual license procedures and fees and promulgating the record keeping and reporting rules and regulations on parking transactions pursuant to the local tax enabling act 53 pa csa 6901 at seek by amending section one definitions by adding the exemption of educational parking amending section three annual license 
by changing the annual license at a fee of $1 per space to a flat fee of $50 per year, amending Section 5, Return and Payments, by changing monthly to quarterly, and in addition to city add or the city's designee, and amending Section 6 to add a designee to the overall management of the parking tax. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question. Just on, on the question, I just reiterate my comments I made under motions. Uh, I don't agree with these amendments, so I will be voting no. I, I don't necessarily disagree with the amendments. I think what we need to do is to define what educational parking means. Um, does that apply to any parking at an educational institution? Does it, does it, is it defined as only student parking? Um, I, I think the idea of just the phrase educational parking really doesn't define or explain exactly what is being exempt. Um, and I think that that is something that really, that does need to be answered. Um, prior to a, a final vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of the council number 31, 2014, an ordinance amending file of the council number 79, 2012, entitled an ordinance repealing all prior ordinances regarding fines to be imposed for police and fire departments' responses to false alarms in the city, establishing fines to be imposed for the activation of an alarm device which is determined to be a false alarm by the police department or fire department, authorizing the administration and enforcement of said fines and prescribing penalties for violations of this ordinance. By amending certain sections, eliminating a section, renumbering and adding a new section to provide for a graduated fee structure and to increase collection and payment of said service charges and to provide for an appeal process. You've heard reading by title of item 6C. What is your pleasure? Or 6B, excuse me. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question, um, I did receive uh, one, one phone call concerning this, and it was a retired fireman who's I'm thankful that the, the fees for home alarms uh, are, is being changed, uh, and, or being distinguished from, um, I'll say, commercial. Uh, commercial. commercial, yes, that um, a, as he explained, uh, one evening his alarm system kept triggering, and it had nothing to do with, it was a faulty there was a fault in the system, and he couldn't get it repaired in time, and he was being subjected to a, a rather heavy fee because the, the system went faulty. At, at, you know, it was not his fault, but uh, he was thankful that it's being changed, and uh, I think this will be a good, uh, a good remedy for the, that situation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it and so move. 6C, reading by title, file of the council number 32, 2014, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to enter into a lease agreement with West Scranton Little League for use of city-owned property for a one-year period commencing April 15, 2014 and ending April 14, 2015. Per section 9 of the lease agreement, the Westside Falcons junior football team will enter into a third party agreement with the West Scranton Little League for use of the Lackawanna Little League field for the months of July through November 2014 as specified in the lease agreement. As chair for the committee on rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. I'm on the wrong one, right? I'm losing track here, I'm sorry. Uh, you've heard reading by title of item 6C, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6C pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 
Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 61, 2014, appointment of Sean McAndrew, 821 North Garfield Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority. Mr. McAndrew will be replacing Colleen Gleason, who resigned June 10, 2014. Mr. McAndrew's term will expire on December 31, 2017. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gone? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 62, 2014, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with Pango Mobile Parking, also known as Pango USA LLC, to provide metered and unmetered parking pay-by-sell services for the City of Scranton for the period of four years from June 1, 2014 through May 31, 2018. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7B. Second. On the question. Mr. McGough, I have a comment, please. Um, I say my comments because I figured the comment section during our council part would be, might become heated, so I wanted to save my comments to this point. Um, since last week's meeting, um, I too had questions when we left the meeting last week. So what I did is I went back and I reviewed the Pango proposal, um, went through the information that Mobile Now had given us, went back to the BA's recommendation, and I also made some calls uh, to the uh, representative from Pango. And based upon the information that I received from all of that information and digested it, uh, I feel that Pango does offer the best uh, opportunity for the city. Thank you. Um, one other comment on, um, on this. The, last week it was asked uh, why the use of the term unmetered parking was included. Um, as I said during a caucus, uh, Unmetered provides for the opportunity to create um, mobile parking zones, uh, areas where you would not need to put meters, where it would be strictly for uh, parking through mobile apps. Now, there is no specific plan at this time to do that, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but the legislation does provide for that opportunity. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? No. Mr. Gone? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. I would like to make a motion to take file of the council number 28, 2014 from the table. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it and so move. I will say again that um, item 7C, which was previously tabled, is the, um, the legislation from OECD that was put on the table for a 30-day comment period as required by HUD. Um, the, the next piece of legislation also is a related one. And if there is anyone who wish, wishes to speak to either 7C or 7D, may do so now. Question on the content of the, the changes that were made. Uh, I know, for instance, um, uh, our forester, uh, Tony Santoli, has been doing an admirable job and putting in many, many hours and probably saved us from a lot of litigation from felled trees. Uh, so I'm concerned about his. I know the previous council cut his budget rather se severely this year for the operating budget. And he has money, had money, in the OECD budget. And I'm concerned particularly with the hemlocks up at Naog. I think that those shots have to be given every year or we could lose the hemlocks. And I wonder if 
if that is an item that's been cut? Offhand, uh, or I, I do not believe that that was included in the um, the changes in the uh, amendments. Could, you, you can't say for certain because I mean I, um, I really think that would be that would be very detrimental. I I don't know how Tony's going to operate on what he's got this year. Okay, I'm I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, it has here. This is two. Oh, let me, I mean, I apologize. Me. I know there was a program year 2012. Have, I'm just uh, yeah. Uh, program year 2012 forestry tree planting amount taken eleven thousand one hundred and twenty one dollars ninety two cents. I think that was all of it. So he's got in. Somebody have the budget. What's he got this year to, in total? I I, I do not I have that available. I think you cut it in half, if I'm not mistaken, uh, from like 20, I don't know, it was 20 down to 10 or 10 to 5, but rather significantly. So I would urge you, if you're going to go ahead and approve this, to at least somebody make contact with this tremendous volunteer of the city and see if you can't find, uh, find some, see what his position is financially. And if he's not going to be able to do some of those important time-sensitive things, such as the treatment of the hemlocks, then uh, maybe you could find some in your contingency funding to transfer and increase his operating yeah. money. I, I do know that all of the programs that were either eliminated or cut, the, those people or those organizations were contacted um, by Ms. Abley. Um, through OECD and um, it was explained and I'm not going to say that they agreed but it was you know the information was given to them prior to the amendments being made okay thank you and mrs. Schumacher just uh, I agree with you on, on uh, mr. Santoli he's a very fine gentleman I've known him for years I did have a conversation with him out in this hallway several weeks ago regarding uh, funding and and the issues on that and I do agree it's very important I would hope that the administration will find something in, in one of the accounts or perhaps the county who's giving who's giving the grant for fellows park can can maybe work out a, a greener grant or something like that for this situation yeah. Maybe, I mean, that's certainly, I would, I would encourage you to pursue that because it's true. A lot of people from Lackawanna County use Nayog Park. That's not all Scranton City residents, so it would behoove them to maintain its beauty as well. Exactly. And Mr. Mr. Santoli does this all of his own heart, free of charge. He's uh, pretty active, too. Well, and he's saying, and I, I mean, it, you, you really should ask him sometime for the statistics of what he's done, the, the number of trees that have been cut down and, and trimmed yeah, back, and some of them. I don't know if you ever went on a, one of his uh, excursions where he took you around the city and showed you, and trees that look perfectly healthy, like 60 feet tall, and he would take a, uh, an iron rod and put it right through. It was totally, totally hollow even though it had leaves and <laughs> others that have been down and a lot of trees planted. So I think it's an important program for our city. It increases the uh, oxygen in our air, and but the hemlocks are especially. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to address 7C or 7D? Thank you. 7C, previously tabled for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption file of the council number 28 2014 authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement numerous accounting adjustments to the city of Scranton IDIS system for community development block grant funds by decreasing funding for various programs to account for deficiencies in the city of Scranton's line of credit with the Department of Housing and Urban Development due to unplanned section 108 payments by the city of Scranton in the amount of one million six hundred sixty two thousand forty three dollars and ninety eight cents what is the recommendation of the temporary chair for the committee on community development as temporary chairperson for the committee on community development i recommend final passage of item 7c second on the question roll call please mr wexler yes mr loscombe yes 
Mr. Gone? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. I would like to make a motion to take file of the council number 29, 2014 from the table. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 7D, previously tabled for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption. File of the Council number 29, 2014. Amending file of Council number 56 of 2012, titled Authorizing the Mayor and Other Appropriate Officials of the City of Scranton to Take All Necessary Actions to Implement the Consolidated Submission for Community Planning and Development Programs to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program Home Investment Partnership Program and Emergency Solutions Grants Program for the period beginning January 1, 2013 by decreasing funding for various programs to account for deficiencies in the City of Scranton's line of credit with the Department of Housing and Urban Development due to unplanned payments in various Section 108 loans guaranteed by the City of Scranton in the amount of $1,662,043.98. What is the recommendation of the temporary chair for the Committee on Community Development? As temporary chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. I have a question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. Um, prior to adjournment, I again would like to remind people that next week's meeting will be on Wednesday evening, not Thursday. And I will, if there's no further business, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned.